Senator, thank you for sitting down with me today. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about the idea that as physicians, we don't look at a heart and say that's a Democrat heart, that's a Republican heart. We say that's a heart. In fact, recently there was a terrorist attack in New York and I spoke to the chief of surgery who said, you know, the terrorist is on a stretcher next to one of his victims. Right. And we really hate that, but that's what we do as physicians. So why has the response to your terrible injuries here been to some extent partisan? Why? You know, I'm not sure why. I think because people see someone on TV and they think you're not real, that you don't deserve any kind of compassion, and that maybe you don't hurt like a normal person. And so I think my wife put it best when she said I sort of got assaulted twice, you know, once in my yard from somebody who attacked me from behind, but then the media who thought it was sort of funny or gleeful or that, you know, maybe I deserved it somehow. And, you know, really nobody deserves to be, to be attacked, you know, and from the, the kind of attack I got is kind of like what you'd get from a motor vehicle accident. I mean, I had six ribs broken and you rarely see that even in an, an assault. I mean, it's something like you usually see in a high speed motor vehicle accident. So it was a big deal. I mean, I've gone through weeks and weeks of, of struggling to get my breath. And your wife has described your trouble breathing at night. Uh, you, you were blindsided, I, I guess. I was working in my yard with my earmuffs on, you know, to protect my hearing from the mower. And I'd gotten off the mower facing downhill, and the attacker came running full. But I never saw him, never had a conversation. In fact, the weird thing is I haven't talked to him in 10 years. And so then people say, oh, well, I kind of deserve this because it was a dispute or it was an altercation. And it's like, well, no, I haven't had any conversation with this guy. And I get attacked from behind, don't know he's coming. And the first thing I know is six of my ribs are broken. So it has been, it's been a tough time. I mean, uh, for the first couple of weeks, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get out of bed without assistance. I mean, it, it hurt so bad that somebody had to help me get out of bed. Your wife wrote uh, in an op-ed, the only dispute existed solely in the attacker's trouble mo troubled mind. Why? What, what, what was in his, do you have any idea what was in his head? Well, I didn't before the attack because we'd had no conversation. Um, after my ribs were broken, then he said things to me to try to indicate why he was unhappy. But I think the, um, I guess to me the bottom line is it isn't so important if, if someone mugs you is it really justified for any reason? And so I think the more people belabored, oh, well, was it about yard clipping? Was it because he hates Donald Trump? Does he, he hates you because you oppose Obamacare? You don't really know what's in someone's mind. And so it may have some relevance, but for the most part, the real question should be, are you allowed to attack someone from behind in their yard when they're out mowing their grass, even if you dislike something about their yard? So I guess to my mind, I don't really care what his motives are other than that it's, it's cowardly and it's criminal to attack someone from behind in their yard. By the way, Senator, I love the fact that you mow your own lawn, and I can't believe that anybody in the media criticizes that. That's tremendous, and, that, and that's right. America. So. Well, my kids uh, kind of laughingly say, because you know, I'm always trying to get them to help me in the yard, and they say, but Dad, you like it so much. It's not really work for you because you like doing it. But I do. I, I enjoy being outside, and I spend hours in my yard. It's sort of my place to get away from the stress of Washington and get away from the stress of a lot of things to be just to be able to cut your grass and, and work in your yard. And so, um, you know, I've been working in that same plot of ground for 20 years. You know, it started out rocky and hilly and I've moved the rocks and planted trees. And um, there is something to be said about, you know, watching your trees grow, watching your, you know, your yard develop over a, a long period of time. A lot of people in America go to emergency rooms. And by the way, you and I will agree later that that's the place that insurance coverage, mandatory coverage, or some kind of coverage belongs to protect people going to emergency rooms. But I want you for a minute to pretend I'm your ER doctor, because I want, I want our viewers to know what you felt like when you came into the emergency room. So I'm, I'm the ER doc. What were you dealing with? If you were going to tell me, what would you say? You know, I initially didn't know how badly I was hurt. I knew that it hurt to breathe and that I was breathing very shallowly, and I thought I probably had broken some ribs. I didn't know how bad it was going to be. And so I was short of breath, and every breath was painful. I knew I couldn't lift my hands over my head to take my shirt off. And so I knew something had happened. Um, and I didn't know how bad it was, you know, in, until the x-rays came back. But it was also one of those things where the initial pain and the initial shortness of breath wasn't the full extent of the injury. It got worse over about a 20-day period. So it became more and more difficult to be able to breathe in and out in a, in a fashion without uh, 
the, the, the bruising to my lungs sat on my diaphragm and says, you know, when you breathe, you have to use the muscles of your diaphragm. It goes in and out in a nice, smooth way. Um, mine would go in and out in sort of spas spasms. It was sort of a spasmodic breathing for about 20 days, but it made it sort of at this point where you felt like, am I able to get enough oxygen in, you know, because of not only the pain, but sort of the spasm of that. And then the, after about 15, 18 days, then the lung became infected because it had collapsed in an area. So I want you to talk about that for a minute, because if I understand it correctly from what your wife wrote, this is the time when you were trying to return to the Senate and were effectively right. returning to the Senate, only to find out you had 102.5 fever. Yeah. Could you tell me what that was like? Well, I came back, you know, because we're working on this tax cut plan. I'm a big supporter of the president's tax cut plan. I came back to try to help with that. And uh, I was having some fevers and some night sweats and having some miserable nights. But I thought, you know, I'm just going to get through this. I'm going to get better. I'm going to get through this. Because typically you think when you've either got an illness or an injury, you get better, not worse. But I kept getting worse. And then uh, I was taking you know, a lot of ibuprofen, which controls fever. So I'm taking 800 milligrams of ibuprofen, a, a big dose, three times a day. But then on the plane ride home, I get 102.6 while taking ibuprofen. So, you know, had it not been on ibuprofen, it might have been like 105 degree temperature. So I got very sick. Um, and then the CAT scan showed that not only was the lung collapsing, but it was getting the area of, of, of uh, where the breathing spaces had collapsed was getting, becoming a pneumonia and getting bigger over time. So you had fluid, a pleural effusion. You had three displaced ribs. Some of the ribs or one of the ribs punctured the lung? Well, I didn't actually have a puncture of the lung with a pneumothorax. I okay. had uh, um, three displaced fractures, three non-displaced fractures, six fractures, leakage of fluid. And then I think, uh, well, then sort of a contusion, like the, the lung has sort of been punched. And so the little air spaces collapse and then if you can't breathe in from pain or because they're collapsed or filled with blood, then they tend to get infected. And so then I got a pneumonia in the area where I had the bruising of the lung. And then I think that was my biggest struggle is uh, probably I was dealing with that for more than a week and I wasn't uh, because I was uh, maybe trying to be too stoic with it, hadn't gotten treatment. But then when I went in and got treatment, it, uh, it began to improve on antibiotics. And the last week has been my best week really because I've, I think I've finally now gotten over the pneumonia. If I labeled what is the rehab for this kind of thing, I think a lot of people out there have the false idea that you tape these ribs. Uh, Tell me what you do to rehab broken ribs. Uh, the main rehab is actually blowing into a machine and trying to, uh, so actually you exhale, it's actually inhaling. You inhale in the machine and you're trying to inhale a certain amount of like, you know, two liters of, you know, fluid. You're trying to get enough air in to open those spaces that have been collapsed from the injury. And for the first 10 or 15 days, I really wasn't doing that maybe not doing it enough of it, but maybe hurting too much to bring enough air in, and then the condition got worse. In the last week or so, I've been able to do a, a, a full inhalation, and I think I'm starting to open that area of, of damaged lung now. Were you able to, when you talk about pain control, you used ibuprofen, were you able to get through all of this without using opioids? I did, and uh, I can tolerate a lot of pain, but I think a lot of people also don't understand that ibuprofen actually does help a lot with pain. It also helps with inflammation and fever. And I guess I decided early on that, you know, there are side effects to, as you know, to narcotics. One is constipation, another is vomiting. And boy, I didn't want to vomit and I didn't want really problems with straining in that first week. So I kind of made that decision. And I would have taken them. I had a prescription for them. And I'm not against people taking pain medication. I mean, pain medication can help people. But I also think that um, I, I just wanted to see how I do an ibuprofen. The ibuprofen, it did control the pain because I couldn't survive without the ibuprofen. I mean, I really needed all of that pain relief. How long will it take before you're completely healed? I assume you still have pain. You know, I um, am still in pain. Every time I breathe, I've, I can feel pain, but it's not, as ex it's not like a knife sticking in me like it was from the first three weeks. I would guess I have at least another three or four weeks of this. So I've got six to eight weeks to heal. And my hope, though, is that I have enough strength in the ribs because, you know, the ribs are going to heal like this. And so I'm hoping that they're strong enough that I can go back to doing normal activities that, you know, where I'm not going to break my ribs again by falling down or something, by having a small fall. And I think I'll get there, but uh, I don't know. I have to sort of get through another three weeks, and then I'll tell you. Is there a nonpartisan non inspiring message here about people who get injured or get sick, get back on the bike, get back to work? Well, I think the, the best message I can tell people is that 
people are really angry in America, and you read online, and people are like, oh, he deserved it, he's a, you know, Trump deserves this, and people really, I think they callously say things that they may not believe. They would never, most people wouldn't say that about someone. If I knew you were a Democrat, we wouldn't say, oh, that person deserves to die, but people say stuff like that online. But I will tell you in Washington, if you want a good message out of this is, uh, every one of my Democratic colleagues came up to me and wished me well, and very sincerely so. And to tell you the truth, I think it's one of the unwritten stories in Washington is they think that, oh, incivility rules Washington. Nothing could be further from the truth. As far as Republicans and Democrats talking, I've never had a crossword with a Democrat. I promise you, never. I've actually probably had a few with my own party because you expect more from your own party. It's like your family. You expect them to do something, and then you're disappointed sometimes. With the other side, you know you have some differences, and you try to find your common ground. So I have several Democrats who I talk with every day and work well, but all of them were very supportive, and so were the Republicans. But I think the unsung thing is people think, oh, Democrats hate Republicans up here. We disagree, but we really actually are, are, are pretty friendly to each other on personal terms. One more question about the actual injury, and then I want to ask you about taxes a little. Did he land on you? How, how come six ribs got broken? You know, I'm not, it happened on impact, and it was either the initial impact. It was like a spearing injury. You know how in NFL that made it illegal to spear people from behind? Basically, I was completely unaware. He was running full speed down a hill, which you can run pretty fast down a hill. He spears me in the back, and it, they either were broken then or as I hit the ground, his shoulder probably plows into me as I hit the ground. But it was on impact, either the initial impact or as, as we probably went through the air 10 or 12 feet and then hit the ground again. And so, uh, but it happened with the initial impact, but it was from the force of his head and shoulder sort of spearing me in the back. I've heard you have a pretty uh, famous golfing buddy. Does he, yeah. beat, does he beat you now? You know, I have to tell you the truth. Uh, <laughs> the president, uh, I've never beaten the president in golf. But I enjoy playing with him, and I think it, it's reciprocated because he, uh, I'm competitive, and uh, in golf, you know, sometimes people ask for strokes, and I insist I'm not taking any strokes from the president, and so we play straight up, and if he beats me, he beats me honestly, but uh, no, uh, I think he's got a competitive uh, streak too, but we, uh, we both enjoy the game, and uh, I've enjoyed playing with him.